Welcome to my channel, where today I am embarking on a unique project close to my heart. As some of you may know, I am transforming the plastic into carbon fiber on my Kawasaki ZX6R. Today, I'm making a mold for the side fairing. As you can see, this side fairing has taken a bit of beating and unfortunately can't be repaired back to its original glory. I just don't have those amazing skills to do that. Those bends and curves would be very challenging for me. So I've decided to take on a challenge of creating a split mold. What makes this project particularly interesting is that halfway through I'll be transitioning to a different fairing that I had on the bike. This swap will allow me to capture all the fine details I need for the perfect finish. Anyway, enough of the chit chat, let's get to work. Before masking off the fairing, I cut strips out of the fluted signboard. These strips will be the extra support for the flanges. With the aluminium tape, I mask up the bolt holes, vent holes and areas where I'll be using hot metal glue and the fluted signboard strips. I go around the whole fairing and glue the strips to the edges. This will give an extra support to the flanges. I made the flanges off camera for the mold. I use cardboard pieces to make a template. There are several ways to build flanges for your pattern. This way is the most straightforward process and the most manageable for me. But it still does require attention to detail and some technical skills. I built flanges around the whole part, but I shouldn't have made the flanges for the broken section where the repair was made because I'll make the two part mold later. I just got too carried away with the job. I'm setting up a base support to hold the fairing. I used some bagging tape to attach the fairing to the support. With some masking tape, I have marked the split line. I usually use masking tape or aluminium foil on the pattern as I can use the hot melt glue straight on the fairing. The cleaning will be so much easier at the end. I already attached the wax pyramids to the fluted signboard. I won't have to cut them out afterwards in an awkward position. I attach plenty of back supports to hold it safe and strengthen the barrier. As soon as I was done with the flanges, I started the next step with the beeswax. Went around the whole part and filled the little gaps and placed small pyramid shapes where needed. It is very time consuming job, have to take all the time to do it right, so the edges and corners will look nice and neat.
To make sure I will separate the mold from the pattern, at the end I use chemical release agent from Easy Composites. It is super easy to use and never let me down, except the time when it expired. Since then I have stored this chemical at 20 degrees Celsius. Minimum 24 hours before I start to laminate the glass fiber mat, I mix high temperature laminating resin with fume silica powder, add it to resin at a ratio of 2%. The silica powder will thicken the runny resin into a gel consistency. This will help me much more during the laminating as the resin won't run away and stay in the glass mat. Begin the mold making with the high temperature gel coat. First I measure the gel coat into smaller quantities. This way I can control the hardening time a lot more efficiently. I measure 4 times 100 gram gel coat into the tops. This will give me 2 coats over the pattern. Also measure the laminating resin ready to go as I will be starting laying the glass mat straight after the two coats of gel coat. I start in the corners with the gel coat, then I work my way through the whole surface. It is very important to pay attention to every single stroke, as you could have air pockets built and trapped in between the pattern surface and the gel coat. I could tell you how annoying it is, but my words won't be acceptable on YouTube. Before I start to apply the last layer of gel coat, I have to wait till the first layer gets tacky. Usually, with such a big surface, I can start brushing the gel coat on at the starting point where I begin the first layer. Making sure with my brush strokes I won't pull off the first coat, gently working my way through the pattern. I've pre-cut the glass mat. I'll be using different sizes and shapes for the lamination. It is very important to be prepared for the job. First, I brush the whole surface with the resin as this resin has a longer pot life and it will take longer to get tacky. Also, this way the gel coat can bond with the resin way better. Lastly, I do not have to worry about the gel coat hardening before it's time. I'm using the 225 gram chop strand mat in 5 layers.
This laminating resin softens the mat way slower than the tooling resin does. In this case, I have to be extra cautious and make sure the mat will stay in the corners and edges. I have to go over the same area many times repeatedly. The time to fully harden took around two days. Remove the barriers and cleaned out the wax from the pyramids I had placed down earlier. In these areas I'll be making the split mold. I used some aluminium tape to create the flanges on the back side of the plastic pin. The rigidity of the flanges doesn't matter here, so I can use the easier and faster option on these areas. After hitting the surface with three coats of release agent, I went on and started brushing the high temperature gel coat. Especially in these areas, I have to be cautious that I won't have any air pockets in the tight corners. Then after the two layers of gel coat, I used high temperature molding paste. It is super easy to use as I only have to mix the paste and the hardener together. It's the perfect material to use on small areas like these. I'll have the links for the materials in the description below the video. After everything was set hard, I cleaned off every piece of tape and fluted board. Drill bolt holes through the split molds, those will be the fixing points. When I was done with that, I removed all the small molds and tried to get the fairing out of the main mold. The fairing going to get replaced with the other fairing. This way I can finish the rest of the mold. came out really nice. I am so happy with it. The edges are smooth and sharp and no air pockets at all. 
Now you can put the other fairing back into the mold to get started on the second part of the main mold. I'm bolting back on a few small molds and using a couple of clamps to ensure the fairing sits in the perfect position and won't move. After I was done with that, I rebuilt the flanges over the sides. With beeswax, I filled the gaps and holes. Then I applied 3 coats of chemical release agent with 15 minutes of drying time between each coat. As soon as I finished brushing the last coat of release agent, I had to wait at least an hour before I could continue brushing on the gel coat. The next step was to lay down the glass mat. I mixed some high temperature resin for that and did the same process as earlier shown. I had it set hard for a couple of days. Took off the plastic barriers and cleaned off the wax and masking tape. When the putty was set hard, I drilled the bolt holes and bolted the parts together. I wanted to ensure nothing would move while I trimmed the mold around.
One of my favorite moments of working with composites, the showtime. After removing the molds and fairing, I've seen how well done my job. I can hardly contain my excitement as I take a step back and admire the work I put into this project. The moment I saw the final piece, my heart raced with joy and pride. Every detail came together beautifully and it's clear that the effort and dedication I invested were worth it. The most fit perfectly and the overall finish is precisely what I envisioned. It feels amazing to see my hard work pay off in such a tangible way. I can't help but smile knowing that I achieved something special. This sense of accomplishment fuels my passion and I'm already looking forward to tackle new projects with this same attitude and confidence. The finishing touch for this episode will be the post-curing of the mold. As I carefully place the mold into the oven, I feel the warmth of the oven seems to whisper promises of transformation as the resin begins to cure. This is more than just a project, it's a journey and I'm loving every moment of it.